like I said, my name is Jaime from, from CIPE. And uh, Afonso is an architect. He's, gonna, he's the one that's in the background assisting me with the webinar. We want to thank everybody for joining us. And first and foremost, I'll go ahead and just mention quickly this webinar is about the Open BIM COVID-19 Reentry Plans Program. Now, this is a program that basically you're going to be able to calculate plans in any project. It could be a restaurant. It could be an office building, it could be an airport, it could be a stadium, a indoor, outdoor spaces, pretty much anywhere that you could generate a 2D or a 3D plan. You can create the re-entry plans for this section by applying distance protection, a gloves, masks, hand sanitizer, a, et cetera, all right? Now, first of all, we're going to get started by speaking a little bit about the flow of this particular webinar. First 10 minutes, we're going to focus on just telling you a little bit about what is Thipe and who is Thipe. Thipe, for those of you that do not know, pretty much uh, with one sentence, we are we develop software for engineers, architects, and construction professionals, okay? But we're much more than that. Now the seminar is gonna go through an intro part, like I said, then the workflow. The workflow is just the different options that we have to access uh, this program and to input information into the open BIM COVID-19. Then we're gonna go ahead and look at the COVID-19 uh, re-entry plans program. We're going to take a look at an example that we have that for those of you that know a little bit about Revit, you'll recognize this example because this one we brought it in from Revit. And lastly, we will have a QA and a session. I hope everybody sticks around and hopefully asks us some interesting questions. All right, so let's get started here with the part of Thipe. Now, Thipe has been in business for 35 years as software developers for art engineers, architects, and construction professionals. We have 35 years experience. Now we are located right now, we have a presence in more than 60 countries, more than 60 countries that we have a presence, all right? Uh, some countries we have a little bit more than others. As you can see, Spain in particular, we pretty much hold the market share for these type of programs. In total, we're more than 70,000 users worldwide, and there's over 120,000 licenses around the world, all right? One great thing about Thipen and why it can be used around the world is because our software adapts to all regional, national, technical codes for each country. So pretty much in every country, you're able to, to use this as long as we, we have all the codes already in our program, which most of the important ones like ESO, Eurocode are already available. Now you can see here that here, the biggest market share is in the Spanish market. This is the red part of my graph. Now FIP is made up of 60, uh, sorry, of 80 technicians in the development department. And these are some very talented individuals working in our, in our development department. They're responsible for all these awesome programs. We're also 60 professionals in our technical support. Support is very important uh, for Thipe. Make sure that everybody doesn't have issues with our programs. Uh, we have a marketing department, sales and administration, and pretty much everybody in the company is a uh, professional and works in a very, very good manner. There are 20 distributors around the world, 20 actual distributors. Uh, we have distributors in some parts of South America, some parts of Africa that we have a big market share there too. Also France, Portugal, it's just some of the countries. And 
now one of the countries we're trying to expand a little bit more into is North America. Now, FIPEN, uh, where our first program started out with structures, uh, structural programs, which are still some of the best in the market, are FIPE CAT and FIPE 3D programs. Uh, these pretty much cover concrete, wood, metal, joints, footings, load bearing walls, slabs, cantilevers, etc. Then we also have our installations part, okay, structures, and then we have an installations part, which in our installations part, we in our MEP program, we have a very good energy efficient program, all right? Our energy efficiency program guides itself by Energy Plus, uh, and pretty much it's one of the best in the market. In installations, we also have thermal, acoustic, fire safety, plumbing, solar, uh, HVAC, gas, electrical, and telecom. In addition, TIPE also has a project management section, uh, which with this project management section, you could pretty much generate all the measurements. You could budget your, job, your projects, uh, health and safety um, guidelines, price generator, uh, you could create your project specs, your project specs and your materials lists, all right? So working all these with all these uh, different uh, software that we have, you can pretty much have a, cover 100% of the building, all right? From A to Z and everything in between. Now our application, uh, our open BIM system, which is an application for both manufacturers and software uh, is in our BIM server center. This BIM server center, this is where you're going to find the COVID-19 workplace re-entry plans software. All right. Now in our BIM server, pretty much, I don't know if uh, all of you are familiar with BIM technology, but pretty much BIM technology is, is based on the use of an integrated application a, in an information manner system containing a construction projects. Now, pretty much those of you that don't really know that much about BIM, BIM is just combining all the process of the construction project of any size in a, in a coordinated manner that you are going to be able to increase the communication, that's one of the most important things, giving us more productivity while controlling errors and mistakes. In the BIM projects, you're gonna start off, you're gonna be able to create a 3D model. You're gonna be able to create data. You're gonna be able to create collaborative work, a collaborative workflow. This is very good for you to try to access jobs that maybe might be out of your, out of your territory. You can actually collaborate uh, with an architect or with a construction company in the United States, and maybe you're located in Thailand or vice versa. Project management, you control the project. Interaction control, which is what I mentioned about controlling any errors and mistakes within the different sectors and the different parts of the project. And also calculating your life cycle and building maintenance after the building. Now, BIM technology is based pretty much on the mythology of exchanging information through an open public file, managed in real time by a web platform, very similar to a cloud. This is pretty much a cloud platform. Now, it uses standard IFC formats, all right? So it's easy to interchange um, information, IFC, GLT, BC3, PDF formats. Collaborative work that integrates a, an open format so everybody can simultaneously be inputting information. It has a specialized application for every sector, whether it's fire, fire simulation, fire safety, construction safety, when you're in the middle of the construction process. 
and you're going to receive, you're going to get some detailed results according to the regulations of each country. So if you're creating a country and uh, project in Brazil, it's going to adapt to the regulations of Brazil, etc. Now, <clears throat> open BIM technology is pretty much common data environment where the first user, all right, that is going to use the software is going to be pretty much the client manager, engineer, supplier, project manager, architect, etc. Now, these individuals are going to need a particular a jobs for their construction projects. That's where all of the different a installation parts come in, all the different parts of the project. And now this information is sent out to the third parties, which sometimes are the people that need the information, require the information, purchase the information, it could be universities for an educational purpose, okay? And in our BIM server center, you could see in the platform, different sections of business part, developers, section for education, administration, forum. And there's also even a virtual reality, all right? Now let's take a look a little bit at the workflow that we're gonna be following in this project. To, to work on this open BIM, a COVID-19 program, you are you have a couple of options for workflow. You have pretty much three options. You can start off from a 2D drawing, DWG or a JP drawing. Pretty much also just take a picture right off a Google Maps. Or you could come off a 3D drawing, either from a our IFC builder and then just a, or through any of the other programs like Revit, a SketchUp, all plan, et cetera, with the appropriate plugin going through our BIM server. I'll get a little more detailed with this now in a second. Now, here are just some projects, some couple of pictures of some of the things you can do with our software. This is a project that's just under construction and you're just applying the construction safety parts. You have signage, barricades, the crane, you can pretty much do everything. Then you could go into a more specialty application, uh, appliances or suppliers in particular. Uh, supply, some manufacturers are in our BIM server and pretty much their specifications are here and they can actually access, people can access them in a 3D manner. And it's a lot more than just the specs and you can use them in the project. So this allows manufacturers to expand their reach also into other markets. Now in our project, we also can do all of the different details, stairs, stairways. Again, is split air conditioners. We can choose machines from different manufacturers, which I'll show you now that are in our BIM server. And then pretty much the whole entire building, structure, all the way to the finishes. Okay. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to share my screen here with you. And we're going to go into our, I'm going to go ahead and show you here in the BIM server. This is a project that you were looking at a second ago. And this is a project that has already been a, done by a, another group of of uh, individuals and they've already done pretty much all of the safety application from the COVID-19 program. You can see here uh, this program in particular, uh, they've been able to show all the different parts that the customer, uh, that the, the, per the construction site has been able to apply. Uh, itinerary paths, um, the masks on the individuals, et cetera. All right. Now we're going to go ahead. I'm going to show you how the workflow here is going to work in our BIM server. All right. Now, when you come into our BIM server website here, there's a section and there's also, there's a blog section. And in this blog section that we have, 
I'm gonna go into the workflows and I'm gonna show you the different workflows that uh, we're going to be able to use from our BIM server, all right? We're gonna be able to start off a JPG file, go directly into the, pro the project. We can go off a PDF file, convert it into JPG and again, start working right directly on the open COVID program. Another option you have here, you can go from a drawing. From our IFC builder available to BIM server, which I will show you now, go through our BIM server and access again the program, be able to get information to it. You could also go through Revit. A, you use our plugin, which is also free, and you're able to access BIM server and connect information into the Open BIM program. Or you can just go through any of the other ones, all plan, SketchUp, Graphy, Soft, ArchiCAD, using our IFC uploader, upload into our BIM server, and from there you could go into the program. All right. Down here, we see Afonso. This is the gentleman that's helping me out uh, with the webinar. He's a very well-prepared individual, PhD in, in civil engineer, or candidate, right? Soon to be. Now, let's go ahead. I'm gonna show you just the website, our BIM Server Center. When you log in, this is gonna be your landing page. This is where you're gonna be able to download the program. Now here you have different languages that you could choose from English, obviously Dutch, et cetera. And there's a very interesting video that if you enter this part, I highly recommend that you go ahead and take a quick look at it. You'll be able to see a little more information here um, to develop your BIM projects, connect to other professionals, just a little bit more about BIM. And here it's gonna give you a little bit of numbers on on the projects already so we have in our bin server right now 53 53,194 users and 120,000 projects right well this morning was less so this this is a big amount all right this is a big amount uh, for such a short time now when we go into the program here uh, we're gonna log in if you're not logged in you just need to sign up for free you register I'm already a register, so I'm going to access. And when you access here the project, the website, you're going to see here a section that says your projects, contacts, download information. You click into your projects, you see all the different projects that you have. And here in the part that says store, this is a very interesting section for you to take a look at. This is where you're gonna be able to download this program, the Kobe program, all right? But before I go into there, eh, I just wanna show you here, we also have a section that is for manufacturers. So here, these are manufacturer solutions for many different things. Eh, when it, so air conditioning, insulation, eh, energy efficiency, we have many different programs. And these are uh, manufacturers that have allowed us to design programs for them uh, to be able to be used in our workflow, all right? So when you pretty much uh, use one of these programs, it's if you are a manufacturer, it's very good because you're able to expand, again, your reach. Um, and you can see these are detailed programs, not just specifications on each, all right? Now let's go ahead into the open bin. This is uh, what the seminar is all about. And you're gonna go ahead and find this program in our, in our store. It's a free program, all right? And uh, it'll give you a little bit of information on it. You can download it in different languages. All that you need to do to download it is pretty much click here, download, and then a, you're gonna get a zip file. And in this, a, you need to download whatever language you, you like. 
all right, um, in whatever language is preferred. And you, you will have to download the BIM server in sync also to be able to coordinate information back and forth. You know, most people already know about this. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the program. I already have it downloaded in my, in my computer. You can see it right here, all right? And we're gonna take a look at this particular model, all right? This is already the sample model in the COVID-19 workplace reentry program. Now, as you can see, we can have a 3D view or we can pretty much go ahead by the floor plans, all right? Now, this project, like I mentioned, is a project that comes uh, off Revit, and we pretty much ran it through the plugin, and we were able to, to enter here all of the information, all right? Now, here, all of the calculations have already been done. All, actually, all the people have already been placed. So in this part of the webinar, what I'm going to focus is on this top left part of uh, the bars here at the top. Now, let me go ahead and explain to you just a little bit about the different control bars that we have here available. Now, first of all, on the top, you see your save button, your print button, et cetera. And now when you go across here, you see this button here that you could go into previous window, obviously, for a full view. Now you have this one here, obviously, to move or you could just uh, pull down on your middle scroller and do it. You have also a 3D orbit button. Now these buttons that you see over here, uh, the project that I'm going to be working on today, because we're gonna look at this example and then we're gonna make a new project, a, a very, uh, just pretty much a restaurant. And we're gonna start that one from scratch but I'm gonna go ahead and, and choose the BIM workflow. So I'm gonna bring it from my IFC builder in my, BIM, uh, in my BIM center already. Now, if you were working on a 2D drawing, you pretty much will first bring in the templates, all right? And uh, from here, you'll be able to download. Now, further across on this top bar, you can change the grid. Right now, we're here just on a full grid, or you can just change the grid. Uh, and pretty much change the whole design of it, all right? Further along over here, uh, you can see that uh, you have a little computer here. This is in case you need to put the coordinates. You could also put this by coordinates. You could also calculate the dimensions. And now all over here, all the way to the right, you are going to see that there is a, a little book right here. This is very important. I even reduced my screen for this. Now in here, you can go ahead and down and, and upload here on a, a user's guide. Now we have a user's guide in Spanish and English, et cetera. So this will really help you uh, work. Uh, uh, this will really help you to work with the program if there's anything that, that you will still need help, all right? Here you have also a settings part for you to, to, to change the settings. All right, so as I mentioned in this particular program, in the, in the example, I'm just gonna focus on this section. Now this section here of the top controls, the part that says project, pretty much is gonna tell you everything that has already been placed into this project. This section here that says elements is for you to insert things into the project. So once they have been inserted from the elements part, you can go here and check what has been inserted. So that's what we're going to do right now. Now, the first one here on the top left, we have a, a little button that says spaces, all right? If you click on this button, it's gonna show you every space in the building, every single space in the building. You see the number of every single room. Now, if you click on one of them in particular, double click, it's gonna give you a description. If you've written a description, you can mark a particular color. If you want to, for some reason, uh, show a difference in that room, 
height. And one very good thing here you could do is that you can max the occupancy. You could put a maximum capacity or maximum occupancy for this particular room. All right, so if I wanna reduce the capacity to 10 in room 225, I just go ahead and do this, that's it, okay? Now, underneath that one, we have uh, people. Now here, we're gonna check all the different people that are here in this project. Everybody here is pretty much, a, there's a reference for them, and it's good to put a reference in case you need to make changes. And if you see here, the person's coordinates on the right, you see their coordinates. People that are in the first floor, obviously level zero. People that are in the second, in the other floor, the level rises and, and so forth. So this is the coordinate of every person in the building. The ones that have an S next to it are people that are seated instead of standing. Okay, we have different options and I will show you that. Now here we have the itineraries. These are these green sections that you see through the building. And these are the most, the safest paths for you to take if you are going to travel through the building without entering other people's interpersonal space, okay? The same thing, you could go in here and edit them and adjust them as you please. This is once they've already been placed in the project, okay? You have the same for separators, all right? Separators, if in some sections, uh, we do not have uh, enough space, all right, to work with, we're gonna go ahead and maybe have to create a separator. So if you see in this particular case here, we've created separators because the area of work for these individuals, uh, it was impossible to move her around. So to be able to uh, be in the proper regulation, we go ahead and uh, adjust this with the separators, okay? Now, next we're gonna pretty much look at the same thing, reception space. We can put a reception space for you to place all of the different items like hand sanitizer, masks, gloves, all right? So we have hand sanitizer, masks, gloves in different parts of the building. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and show you. And when I'm working in 3D view, if you come in here to this part that says snap options, you click here on the snap options and you're gonna get a, a window that it pretty much gives you the opportunity to make certain things uh, visible. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove windows, roof, the architectural part of the space so we can just look a little bit deeper in this and we'll see how this will be adjusted. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna also remove the roof so we can see right off the top. All right, and now you could see right here, we have a reception area with gel here, and a sanitizing gel, gloves, and a mask, okay? And the last thing that we are going to look at here is going to be this part, signs. Now, I guess there's not much signage here in this project, but pretty much you can, if I wanna place a sign right now in this project, I can just come here to my elements and I could pick a sign, let's say, a interpersonal safety distance and just place it right there like this, all right? And that's pretty much it. Now, once that I've placed the sign, you will see that I have one sign placed in this particular location, okay? Now, let's just take a look at a couple of things here that are also important uh, in this section, in this part of the menu before we get into the project that I'm gonna make. The little wheel right here, configuration, is very important because with this one, 
you come in here and you have a window that it tells you maximum capacity into personal space separation between people and itineraries. With this, you can adjust the maximum capacity of the entire project, the entire project. So once you do this, uh, it adjusts uh, not just by room, but the whole thing. Also the interpersonal space, you can adjust it. Uh, you know, right now we are in Spain in particular, and there's a certain requirement by, by the government on the interpersonal safety distance. But as, as phases start to pass, well, maybe that will be reduced and we can come here and adjust it, all right? With just one simple click of a button. And we can also put a separation between people and itineraries. Now, the next thing that I just wanted to show you one last time, which we had seen in the, before, but I wanted to just show you one more time. Remember that you have this section over here that you can adjust. And then remember that here you have a ruler so you could calculate the lengths, okay? Also. Now here, this is gonna be what's gonna actually do the calculations. Once I have a plan ready and I've done a, a job, I'm gonna go ahead and press here on the calculator and it's gonna do all the calculations. We're gonna do that now when we, when we do our project, okay? So let's go ahead and start a new project now from scratch. And let's see how, how this goes. Now we're gonna go ahead and the way you'll start a new project from scratch from the beginning, you pretty much are just gonna come right here and click view. Do you want to save changes in the current project? Well, I'm not, all right, so no. Now my new project is gonna be called webinar. restaurant and restaurant description. So now here, eh, I'm already signed up into my BIM. I'm gonna select one of the drawings that I have on my BIM platform and I'm gonna import it into the program here. You press next. And it is right now a verifying everything and shortly it will appear on my screen. Now in this restaurant layout, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna show you how to group people to, uh, to show an exception to the, to, to the interpersonal space. I'm gonna show you how to place people. You would have to choose here if you have any different layers in the project. I'm only using for the furniture. And I'm gonna show you how to do the final calculation and how to make adjustments if the calculations are not correct. All right? Like I told you, this is a very simple program to use. And pretty much if you watch a couple of webinars and go into our manual, which is located in the top right, where I told you before, you should not have any problems, okay? So our project will shortly appear here on the screen. And we will go ahead and get started with this part. Here we go. Okay. And here we go. So now my project first shows up uh, on 2D. I have here the roof. And I have here the ground floor plan. Now, I've made here a little restaurant, all right, with a, a little outside terrace. You know, in Spain, we, we like those little outside terraces a lot, but I'm sure throughout the world, everybody does. And we're gonna go ahead and just start off by a, placing some of the employees here, all right? Let's go ahead and it's important to write and reference all the people so that you know afterwards in case you need to make any adjustments. And the first person I'm gonna put, I'm gonna go ahead and put the hostess uh, at the entrance. She's gonna be wearing a mask. You see, you have the option of putting a mask if the person is seated. And 
you can also put their interpersonal space. Now I'm gonna go ahead and place her right here. Now, if she's viewing the wrong way, you can spin her around afterwards or just right here, you have these arrows, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and change her. I'm, I'm gonna place a person right here, all right? Now I'm gonna go ahead and place another person inside. This is gonna be a waiter, a man. He's also wearing a mask. And I'm gonna go ahead and place him here at the end of the bar. And again, I wanna face him out. So I just press here and that's it. Now let's go ahead and put a couple of people in the kitchen, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and put a cook. Right here, also place them right here. And let's go ahead and put also a, a cook assistant. Not for any reason, just to change it around, put a woman. And here we go, All right? And we're gonna go ahead and put one more worker. All right, right here behind the bar, we'll put a bartender. And we'll put here bartender. And we're gonna have her looking. All right, perfect. All right, so we have our, our workers so far, the restaurant workers. All right, now let's go ahead and Place a couple of families. We're gonna go ahead and put uh, family eating inside. And we were gonna name this family, family one. And anybody that you're planning on afterwards going into the button underneath and grouping as a family, it's very important that we identify them properly, all right? So now this is a visitor to the restaurant. So they're not gonna be wearing a mask because they're gonna be eating and they're gonna be seated. So I changed this. And I'm going to place one person here. Now, if you don't have the proper angle and you know the angle, you could just place it right here, 45 degrees, and you can move the person around, all right? So we go ahead and that's it, all right? Now we're gonna put one more, another person in family one, which now is a man seated right over here. And we're going to put also a boy, a little girl, seated also into personal space, and she's going to be seated here with mommy and daddy. They went out for dinner after the COVID-19, and they're enjoying their first evening together. All right, here we go. Now we're going to go ahead and put another family in another section of the restaurant. Let's go ahead and put here. Well, also a little girl will also be part of this family. Now, since this one in particular is another family member, it's not the same one, I'm gonna go ahead and, and erase it so that I don't have any problems when I'm laying, uh, when I'm doing a grouping. So I'm gonna name this one family two. And we'll place family two right here, the little girl. Let's go ahead and put daddy. right here and we're gonna go ahead and also place a, a little boy with them, all right. All right, very good. All right, this one yeah, is into personal spaces. All right, now after this, we're gonna go ahead and just place a couple of more people uh, out here. 
very quickly. Well, just at the bar in particular, we'll put two friends at the bar. And this will be a man. And we'll go ahead and place him right here. And we'll go ahead and place another one over here and another one over here. Now, just to fill up here a little bit the restaurant, let's go ahead and put one more. One more person over here. And we're gonna name these friends too. One second here. All right. Uh, let me just put the last person and then we'll move on to the itinerary. So we have one um, there. All right, so we have all our people placed so far. All right, and now next, what we are going to do is we're gonna make a, we're gonna place our, our path, okay? Now this path in particular is going to be a, for us to calculate the safest path that one can take a, or what the restaurant owners would like for their customers to take, okay? So now this particular, it's an error here. You have the option of queuing distance markings. Now here, this is so people maintain their personal space. We'll go ahead and put some here coming off the parking with some markings, all right? But then probably the rest of the project in some parts, we'll just go ahead and put the regular markings with no distancing. And this is the, the, this is the path that we would like our customers to take in the restaurant. All right, so those through here when they enter, etc. All uh, the way to here. Then we'll bring it over here, right to here. And now this next section, since it's by the bathrooms, we're gonna go ahead and give it some interpersonal space. So this next section will give it some markings from here to here, all right? Now, the other thing also that you do is you can do the same path if an itinerary for your workers. So let's say, for example, in the kitchen, if you want everybody following a, a clockwise direction around the kitchen while well, you mark it out for them. Right, this is what I would like for all the employees to follow. When they enter the kitchen, enter this way, exit the other way. All right, here we go for this part. Now, as you can see, our project is starting to come together a little bit now. And we've done, we have already some of the people placed. We've done already the itinerary. Now next, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna place a separator. Uh, well, actually we're not gonna place a separator for now yet. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put a reception point. Now this reception point is for you to place maybe your jet, the different high, uh, hand sanitizers, gloves and things like this that you might want to put in a project. You know, depending on where you are located, there might be different requirements. So just depending on what is required, you know, you could use one, you could place one, place two, et cetera. I'm gonna go ahead and put one at the entrance of the restaurant. Bins, this is another thing, all right? You can place bins wherever you feel necessary, all right? So for example, in, we require one here, maybe we'd require another one here at the entrance. Uh, we probably would require another one 
uh, at least in the kitchen here, maybe another one back here, probably in the bathrooms. Uh, also a couple of bins here and here. All right. Now, next, we're going to go ahead and put some hand sanitizer. Now, the hand sanitizer, uh, we can place a fixed, a fixed dispenser. All right. And this fixed dispenser, you would assume it here is going to go on the wall. All right. So we're going to go ahead and put this dispenser right over here. And we're going to go ahead and put another dispenser right over here. All right. Now, we also have the option of placing little bottles of hand sanitizer. We're gonna go ahead and put a container out here. In the reception desk. Now it's important for you to notice that if you have to place this, uh, you got to give it a displacement because uh, obviously this is in a different elevation. So you're gonna mark this displacement button here. And like this, you are going to be able to mark this elevation here and adjust it. So like that, when you place this, uh, which I've already actually placed one in the wrong place, when you place it, uh, the elevation will be different. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and place one here. And we're also gonna place, we're gonna look here for some gloves. Let's put a, actually some masks. Let's put a pack of masks. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go here. I'm gonna put the displacement here too. And we're gonna put some masks here also for our guests. The same thing. All right. And we're going to also grab some gloves. And we're going to do the same thing with the gloves. All right, you go ahead here. And All right, so now we're going to go ahead and place our gloves. And we're just gonna have a pretty much one more thing to do, which will be the signage. And we will be a pretty much done. You see right now we have gloves, we have the people, et cetera. And now we will do a, the signage and we will run the calculations. Now remember just because of the time I've put a few people, but this, remember you could just do this with any size of project, okay? And it's very, very quick and easy to use. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do is put the signs. We have a section here which we offers us seven different sign possibilities, interpersonal space safety, how you should wash your hands, avoid touching face, recommended when cough and sneeze, hand washing size. So I'm gonna pick the hand washing ones and I'm gonna place a couple of them here in the bathroom. One here, one here. Just make sure everybody knows how to wash their hands. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put another sign here, maybe the interpersonal distance that I want people to have throughout this restaurant. And this one, we're gonna place it right at the entrance of the project here. But where the direction obviously is gonna be the way. Like this, all right. And maybe for this, we might want to put one more here at the entrance of the project, of the here, maybe out here. Okay, so uh, I think pretty much everything is done right for now. Uh, all we're going to have to do now is calculate the project, and then it's going to tell us uh, where we have any problems. To do this, there's a little calculator, we press this, and the program gets to work, calculating the, the maximum capacity, et cetera. Oof, look at what I did here. This is a, there's a lot of people here that are incorrectly placed. 
but not a problem. Don't worry, this can be fixed quite easily. Now we're gonna do two things. In this, these uh, three sections of family members, we're just gonna go in to the part that says groups and we're gonna pick groups. Now here we don't have any groups made now, but we are gonna make them. Now the first group is family number one. I pick everybody in family number one. I can name it family one. Wrote that in Spanish by mistake. And let's go ahead and just, these are, they're gonna be green, all right? We're gonna accept, accept, that's it. Now, next one we're gonna go is to family two. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna pick family two. One, two, three. Right. family two right here all right and we're gonna do pretty much the same thing we're gonna name this one family two so what this is doing is telling the program that these people are friends and just to pretty much ignore the calculation because they are together all right and accept now we're gonna do this other one over here too this one is family This one is actually family friends two. This one is friends number two. And we'll go ahead and leave them purple. Friends two, accept. And they are going to be purple. All right, so now we run again our calculations and you're gonna see that these are gonna be fixed, but we're gonna still have problems with the people sitting in the bar. All right, so you see all of these people now have been corrected and we know that they've been corrected because when we go here, the I with the groups, it shows us the color of all the groups. All right, we have one family, one group, another family, and then another. All right, so we still have problems with two, two of them that there's an issue, all right? Now with this one, what I would like to do, I'm gonna play some separators. So you see how the separators work. You have an option here of separators, and this is when the interpersonal distance is not enough and you don't have any more space. So pretty much we're gonna place here a separator and I'm gonna zoom in close and I'm gonna go ahead and place it from here to here, one. And then I'm gonna place another one from here to here. All right, so now these two separators, what they are gonna achieve that I'm gonna be able to do the calculation and I'm not gonna have an issue, you see? I placed two separators here in this section of the board, okay? So now let's go ahead and confirm that everything is okay. And once it's okay, we're gonna export the project and we're gonna be finished and be able to move on to some questions. So yes. Like I told you, the project has a, pretty much been a, already completed. A, and I think that pretty much it's taken all the different a, parts of the project properly. Everything has been calculated and we are pretty much ready to send these plans into use. All right. So now how do we export this back into our into my BIM platform, all I got to do is press here on the top right, export. I'm going to export this project. And once I export it, it's going to be able to be viewed my BIM server uh, right away. Well, as soon as it updates, okay? So let's give it just a little bit of time. In the meanwhile, if everybody could start thinking of the questions that you would like to ask, you know, it would be nice to get some feedback from everybody. Let's just wait a second so that this loads and then I'm gonna show you how it appears in my BIM server. Now, if there's anything in particular that you feel that I left out of the webinar, just ask us and we'll we'll try to we'll try to answer all your questions
And when you import and export into BIM, depending on the layers of the project, sometimes it'll take a little bit more, a little bit less. Uh, when you see the amount of work that's done on in real time, it's, it's nothing. It's very, very quick. All right. So if uh, Alfonso, if you would like to, well, let's actually just say that this is almost done and then we'll just go ahead and. All right. Uh, thank you, Jaime. It's really well done. And the presentation was very, very good. Um, actually, we have a couple of uh, questions here. Um, the first one coming from Mr. Sabah Alain. Uh, he's asking us, uh, where can we find the plugin in Bing Server Center for to download the, the, the application? Maybe could we could you uh, show us a little sure. bit more where, where uh, can we find it? You go into our BIM server, okay, our BIM server center. If you're not signed up yet into our BIM server, you have to sign up, all right? And when you go in, you're going to go into store. In the section that says store, Right here, you have different applications. This happens to be the first one that comes up, but if you would write here, open BIM, COVID, whatever, if you just even write COVID, it would appear, all right? So you would just click here and you have the application. Now, once you go in here, you just have to press download and you pretty much download the program, that's it. All right. All right. So I'll just to show you very quick, my export has finished from the project we did. You see, it says export finished. And I just want to show very quick, Alfonso, how this project already appears in my bin. All right. I have here For my sure. projects. And if you see right here, this was just done a little while ago. All right. And the project here is completed. We can change the visibility here. So some of the parts are transparent. We're going to put in all the safety. And we're going to add in this layer, which is what we just did right now. And uh, we're going to make transparent the restaurant. Let's go ahead and put in also the furniture, which was missing. And here you go. This is our finished work. All right. All right. So that's very nice because actually we can invite other members of our project to work together in the same uh, the same open Bing project. You know, so you, we can create our team using Bing Server Center, and for example, uh, any other discipline for our project could be uh, developed uh, and using other tools. Uh, and using the same same place in, in the cloud, you know, this same project on the server center. Um, we have here another question from Mr. M Mibarki Ch Chesaret. I'm sorry about the, the pronunciation. Um, he, uh, he asked, uh, he asked us, uh, as a conclusion, what we can say about the aim or the purpose of this software about opening COVID-19? And this pretty much is for you to calculate the safety uh, requirements needed in any situation before accessing again uh, different projects or different places after this whole COVID uh, virus situation. With these software, you are able to make sure that safety is uh, actually uh, done properly. And it's just, it's not a guesstimate. You know, you've actually done this with a program and you know you're maintaining the distance. Also this program, uh, we're gonna develop a few more things into it. Uh, I think we're gonna have some sleep simulators and things like this. Is that correct, Afonso? Yes, we are working on that. And um, in the next version, I think it's gonna be this week. This week, okay. uh, possibly it's gonna be available. Uh, we'll have a new a new feature that, that is gonna be the budget uh, or the list of materials that we can have for this, all these elements that were uh, included in our model. So you can uh, have an, an idea about the price of this, this uh, changes that we must do in our 
uh, in our workplaces. So it's, it's going to be one of our new features. And, uh, and also some uh, uh, not another checks, new checks about the ventilation system or the mechanical ventilation systems that we must have in our, uh, in our workplace. So it's very flexible uh, for each country. The 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 reentry reentry plans are will be different. So we we can, we have the possibility of uh, uh, add these parameters and and set up these parameters. Uh, always uh, looking to the codes or the the the, the new uh, regulations that we have in our countries. Uh, and it's in some one of them it's more difficult or sometimes it's easier to, to reach this this uh, this uh, results but the, the main purpose is to generate this uh, kind of um, safe plan or biosecurity safe plan some, something like that okay all right um, well, any other questions at this moment we have just this uh, two questions but if right. uh, if anyone wanna ask something, we are we have some minutes yet, and feel free to contact us. All right. Well, uh, if not, like I tell you, it's a program. It's very easy to use. Make sure that uh, you go ahead and you take a look at the at the manual. You know, this manual can really help you. And this is something that uh, any of you can just take a look at it, read it a little bit, and you will be able to understand a little further uh, this program. Okay, you see we have here a whole entire manual. It is in English also, right? I don't know if you can put a, a link to the English one there, Afonso. I and, uh, think I have the link for, for this one somewhere here. I'll uh, check and maybe I'll, I'll share that. And if That's not, Thank you so much for everybody joining us. All right, we really appreciate it. And I hope that you will join us again for more webinars in the near future. Um, okay, I thank you all uh, for this, this moment with us. Um, just uh, checking here, I will share with you in the chat box uh, a link for, for this manual. You can access this manual. And also for download the program, so it's going to be easier for you. I will just uh, t t uh, copy here from Big Server Center the link that um, Jaime showed before. And just a second, um, let's open it. And then you have all the information that you that you need. I would like you to invite you to our LinkedIn group. We are we created a. A LinkedIn, LinkedIn group just to discuss these uh, different reentry plans that we have uh, over the world, just to share experience. Just look for Open Being COVID on LinkedIn. You can find that. It's a free group. You can enter there and uh, add some information that you have about these these changes that we are um, living in this moment. You now, so the, the, the things change uh, very fast during these times. And we, and we are trying to, uh, to have a, a place with common information, uh, discussing the, the best ideas to, to create this uh, workplace, workplace reentry plan. So you are invited to, to, to come and, and, and participate of this initiative. So uh, just look for Open Being COVID on, on LinkedIn, okay? Okay. Well, Thank you so much and have a great evening. So I think that today that that's all. I uh, thank you very much and, and see you. Thank you, Jaime. Bye bye. Thank you.